Hey everyone, there's a brand new feature inside of Lightroom which you're going to really love. It might seem like a small feature, but it's actually huge. Now we can apply curves to masks. Why is that big? Because now it gives us control over the brightness in the shadow and the highlights, as well as a way to control colors like you can't do any other way. Let's check it out. So let's go ahead in the develop module, we're going to create a new mask. And on the mask, why don't we select the sky? Because on this particular photo, the sky is too bright. Now we can go in and we can bring the exposure down a little bit. And we can also bring down the highlights to bring out some detail in the sky. When we look at our basic tonal adjustments, there's five areas that we can adjust. Blacks, shadows, exposure, highlights, and whites. If you want to have more control over specific tones, you need curves. Now curves have always been in Lightroom, but they only just now added them where they will work inside the masks. And this is huge. Let me show you why. So I want to darken down these, but in a specific tone. So now I can drag and I can pull down. And as I move to the left or the right, I can move through the tones and find exactly where I want to go. Another option is to grab this little picker find the region that we want to darken, click and drag down. And notice we can target that very precise tone. And if you're getting any value out of this video, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. You won't miss any of my videos. We're going to do something with colors in a moment. But before we do, let's create an additional mask. So I'm going to create a new mask. And what I'm going to do on this one is I want to select everything but the sky. So here's the thing. If I choose select background, Notice it just grabs everything except for our building. That's not what I want. So a way to do that is to create the mask and select the sky. Now click the three dot menu and choose invert. Now we've selected everything but the sky. Now I could have duplicated this mask, but it would also duplicate the settings and I'm going to use different settings. So let's look at our foreground and let's do our basic highlight recovery. And I'm going to do a little bit of shadow recovery. Now notice as I do that, it gets the shadow region, but it doesn't necessarily give me specific control on what area I want to call the shadows. So let's open it up just a little bit. But what if I'd like to open it up more into these dark areas in the trees without affecting everything else? This is where the curves come in. Under the curve, why don't we grab the picker? I'm going to go into these dark regions and look on the curve. You can see on the left, the shadows on the right are the highlights. You can see where those regions are. So I'm just going to click and I'm going to drag up a little bit and I can brighten up those areas. Now, some of the other areas are too bright, such as the grass. Now I could click and drag down and just roll that back. So now what I've done is I've targeted the specific tonality of the image. And if we look at it before and after, you can see we're showing a lot more detail. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Let's talk about color. And right now we have a pretty realistic looking image, but I'm going to push it a little bit further and go a little bit more artistic on this, but I'm doing this as a lesson so you can understand how these tools work. Not necessarily this particular image. You're going to be working on your own images, but let me First of all, we're going to select the sky. All right, so we've got the sky mask selected and we're going to put a little bit of orange into the highlight area of these clouds. Now, this is where the power of color curves come in. If we go to the curves right now, we're working in tone curves. As you notice, as we pull down, it darkens. As we pull up, it lightens. Now we're going to go into completely different mode. Notice these other three dots. If we click on them, they bring us into the channels. We've got the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. And if we adjust any of these, notice that we're going to put that blue into the sky because we're in the blue channel. Double click to reset. Now this is significant. These three colors, RGB, red, green, blue, are a color mode. Now there's another color mode that you might have heard or might not have heard of. And that is the opposite of red, green, and blue. And that is cyan, magenta, yellow, black, CMYK. 
Now K stands for black, but we're not going to deal with it because we're dealing with colors. So we've got cyan, magenta, and yellow. The reason I bring that up is what if you want to add yellow and you're working in RGB? How do you get yellow? Well, if you look in here, you'll notice this is a baseline. That baseline is the diagonal. If I pull up, notice it turns the sky blue. But notice it doesn't light nor darken it. It's not affecting the tonality, only the color. The opposite of blue is yellow. If I drag down, notice it doesn't darken the image. It just changes or adds more yellow. Now, if we go to the left, it's going to affect the shadows. If we go to the right, it's going to affect the highlights. So that means that we can apply any of these colors specifically into the highlight or the shadow regions. So let's add a little orange into the highlight. So we're going to go into the red channel. By the way, the opposite of red is cyan. Cyan is on the other side. The opposite of green is magenta. There's magenta. See that? Green, magenta. So that's how you get those colors. All right, so let's go into the red and I'm going to add a little bit into the highlights. So let's add some red. Notice it's affecting the whole thing. Let's just pull it back a little bit. There we go. So now we're mainly targeting the highlight area. And now, of course, to get orange is a combination of red and yellow. We now know how to get yellow. Let's go to the blue channel and drag down. We introduce some yellow. Let's pull it back up so it's not affecting the shadow area. And now we've added a little bit of color there into the sky. Now let's look at the rest of the image. So we're going to choose the rest of the image here. We're going to grab our mask on the rest of the image. And let's do a little bit of orange in the highlights and a little bit of blue into the shadows. So normally you would go down and you would use the color grading tools to do this, but the color grading are not available inside of the masks, which is why we're using the curves. So let's add a little bit of blue. Left is the shadow, right is the highlight. Let's push a little blue into our shadow. Look at that. And you could let it go across the whole image or we could pull it back a little bit. So now it's only affecting the shadow area. And I wanted to add a little bit of orange into the highlight. So let's pull down on the yellow just a little bit, warms it up a little bit. Notice how that affects the highlight area. You can see it there on that rail that's going too far, but let's just go a little bit. Let's add the red and we want to push some red into the highlights. So remember, highlights are on the right. Push up for red, down for cyan. Let's push up a little bit of red. We don't want it in the shadows. Let's pull it back. And now we can go in and do very specific color grading in here. So if you look at this before and after, once again, just kind of going for a special effect more to kind of show you how this works. Now, if it's too much, you can adjust it. Let me show you go up here and you'll see the amount slider. This amount slider enables you to just roll back a little bit on what you've done or enhance it by going further if you want even. So all the adjustments are going to move together. So let's go and choose our sky because maybe that's a little much. Let's pull the amount back and just kind of dial it in where you want it before, after. So I hope you found that useful. Let me know in the comments underneath if you learned anything new. And if you want to know more about the new features in Lightroom, check out my video over here where it, it's there or there. It's up there somewhere. And uh, if you're new, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, you won't miss any of my videos. Until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.